feeling nervous yet excited, I continued my journey to meet Sarah, my mind racing with anticipation and a touch of naivety. The concept of generosity, as I had interpreted it, seemed straightforward enough. But little did I know, the word held different implications in this context. My youthful optimism overshadowed the potential risks, focusing solely on the promise of an adventurous night. As I drove, the streets seemed to blur together, each turn bringing me closer to an encounter that promised to be as thrilling as it was mysterious. The city lights flickered in the distance, a beacon guiding me through the night. Each message from Sarah fueling my eagerness to meet her, and perhaps relive the exhilarating experience I had once enjoyed. Yet, beneath the surface of my excitement, a small voice of caution whispered, urging me to consider the implications of the word generous, and what it might truly mean in the shadowy world of standing there, confronted with a reality far removed from my expectations. I was forced to quickly reassess the situation, the disparity between the image of Sarah I had formed in my mind the woman standing before me was stark. Despite the initial shock, my decision to proceed was driven by a mix of curiosity, a desire not to offend, and perhaps a bit of stubbornness, given the journey I had undertaken to get there, the condition of the house, the unexpected presence of her brother, and the general atmosphere of neglect and disarray layers of complexity to my predicament. Internally, I grappled with conflicting emotions disappointment, a sense of adventure, and a burgeoning apprehension about the night's potential outcome. As I stood in the dimly lit hallway, taking in Sarah's appearance and the surroundings, I reminded myself to maintain an open mind. After all, Personal connections can transcend physical appearances, and meaningful experiences often arise from the most unexpected situations. With this in mind, I endeavored to engage with Sarah, hoping to find some level of comfort and perhaps salvage the evening. The decision to stay, albeit fraught with uncertainty, was a testament to my youthful optimism and the hope that the night could still offer a memorable experience, albeit not the one I had initially envisioned. Blocking the other, the tension in the air was palpable as I found myself caught in an increasingly precarious situation. The realization that Sarah was expecting monetary compensation added an entirely new layer of complexity to the already uncomfortable encounter mind raced for a way out, the adrenaline fueling a desperate search for an escape route. The claustrophobic hallway, framed by Sarah's imposing figure on one side and her brother's stern presence on the other, felt like a scene straight out of a suspenseful thriller. In a moment of panic, I remembered reading about how to handle confrontational situations, remain calm, Think quickly and use your words wisely, drawing upon every ounce of composure I could muster. I began to explain my misunderstanding, emphasizing the innocence of my intentions and my genuine mistake. I carefully avoided any confrontational language, hoping to de-escalate the situation. I truly thought generous meant something entirely different, I stammered my voice steady despite the pounding of my heart. This was all a big misunderstanding, and I had no intention of causing any trouble. The brother's unwavering gaze bore into me, making it clear that leaving without some form of resolution was not an option. In a desperate bid to diffuse the tension, I offered the only thing I had, a sincere apology 
promise to leave immediately, causing no further inconvenience. Please, let me just go home, and I promise you won't hear from me again, I pleaded, hoping they would see the sincerity in my eyes and understand that I posed no threat. The standoff in the hallway felt like it lasted an eternity, each second stretching into infinity as I awaited their response, ready to seize any opportunity to make a swift and unobtrusive exit, was constantly on the lookout for ways to make some quick cash. My ex, let's call him Jake, wasn't much of a provider and spent most of his time getting high, leaving me to fend for both of us. It was a rough period in my life, one filled with desperation and questionable decisions. The motel we were staying in was the kind that charged by the week, a place where the walls were thin and the clientele even thinner on luck. It was the kind of place you hoped to forget, but somehow, clung to your memory like a stubborn stain. One day, while Jake was passed out, a knock on the door startled me awake. It was another occupant of the motel, a man who had heard through the grapevine that I was looking for ways to make money. He offered me a proposition, one that I knew deep down was a bad idea, but the direness of our situation clouded my judgment. The plan was risky, involving stolen goods and a potential buyer willing to pay a hefty sum. The promise of quick cash was too tempting to resist, and against my better judgment, I agreed. The next few hours were a blur of activity, a mix of adrenaline and fear as we executed the plan. Every moment felt like a gamble, a dance on the edge of disaster buyer turned out to be more intimidating than I had anticipated. His demeanor and questions putting me on edge. I played my part as best as I could, but the fear of getting caught or worse, getting hurt, was overwhelming. Eventually, the deal was done and the cash was in my hands. The relief I felt was short-lived, however, as the reality of what I had just done began to sink in. I had crossed a line, venturing into a world far darker than I had ever known. The money, though desperately needed, felt tainted. A constant reminder of the risks I had taken and the moral boundaries I had crossed. That night, as I lay in the dimly lit motel room, the weight of my actions pressed heavily on me. The sound of Jake's shallow breathing provided no comfort only a reminder of the dire straits that had led me to this point. The experience was a wake-up call, a stark realization of how low I had sunk, and the urgent need to change my path before it was too late. Dealers somehow found out. His face was a mess. Bruises and cuts were all over. He tried to play it off, saying he'd managed to talk his way out of the worst of it. Truth was written all over his battered face. The sight of him in such a state was a wake-up call for me. It was a stark reminder of the dangerous world we had entangled ourselves in. A world of quick fixes and quicker downfalls. The fear and adrenaline from the previous night lingered, making every knock on the door, every shadow in the hallway seem like a threat. The realization hit me hard. This wasn't the life I wanted. The constant danger, the fear, the addiction. It was a vicious cycle that was all too easy to get sucked into, but seemingly impossible to escape from. East brush with disaster was a turning point for me. I knew I couldn't save him from his demons, but I could save myself. It took every ounce of courage I had but I made the decision to leave. Leaving E in that toxic environment behind was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. But 
it was also the most necessary. I left the motel with nothing but the clothes on my back and a resolve to turn my life around. The road to recovery was long and fraught with challenges, but with every step away from that life, I felt a little lighter, a little more hopeful. It was a journey of self-discovery, of rebuilding from the ground up. And though the scars of that time remain, they serve as a reminder of where I've been and how far I've come. To anyone finding themselves in a similar situation, know that it's never too late to seek help, to make a change. It won't be easy, but it's worth it. Your future self will thank you for the courage to walk away and start anew. The street and sprinted back to the library, my heart pounding in my chest. The lights of the library were a beacon in the encroaching darkness, offering a semblance of safety. As I burst through the doors, the familiar scent of books and the hushed atmosphere calmed my racing thoughts. I found my brother nestled among the stacks, oblivious to the drama that had unfolded outside. Catching my breath, I relayed the harrowing experience to him. His protective instincts kicked in immediately, and he insisted on accompanying me for the rest of the journey home. The walk back was uneventful, but the presence of my brother by my side provided a comforting sense of security. This encounter was a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities we face, particularly as young individuals navigating through less secure environments. It underscored the importance of being aware of our surroundings and trusting our instincts when something doesn't feel right. The experience also highlighted the invaluable role of family and community in providing support and safety in potentially dangerous situations. As I look back on that day, I realize how pivotal moments like these are in shaping our understanding of personal safety and the significance of looking out for one another. It was a lesson in caution, but also in the strength that comes from unity and the protective bond of family. As the evening wound down and my brother and I sat in the comforting warmth of our dad's car, earlier fear began to ebb away, replaced by a sense of relief and gratitude for the safety and security that surrounded us. The incident was a stark reminder of the unpredictability of the world outside and the importance of being vigilant. My brother, always the protective one, made me promise to never walk home alone in the dark again promise I was more than willing to make. In the days that followed, I found myself reflecting on the experience, turning it over in my mind. It was more than just a scare. It was a life lesson. It taught me the value of listening to that inner voice, that primal instinct that often knows more than we give it credit for. I also realized the importance of community and family of having people who look out for you, who are there to offer a sandwich when you're hungry, or a ride home when you're in need. Sharing this story, both with my family and now with a wider audience, feels like a way of processing the experience, but also of passing on a message. It's a call to be aware, to be cautious, but also to know that it's okay to ask for help, to lean on others when the situation calls for it. So to anyone out there listening or reading, take this story as a reminder. Trust your instincts, look out for one another, and never underestimate the power of a simple act of kindness. Whether it's a PB and J sandwich when you're hungry or a listening ear when you're scared, these are the things that truly make a difference. Stay safe, stay aware, and always remember you're not alone.